you don't have to take the notes because this was the result of my last exam. You don't have to. Uh, okay, so I have to. Uh, I'm going to give you two lectures today, uh, this morning and uh, later in the afternoon. Uh, last time, uh, I have shown you how to derive this. So this is the Lagrangian for the uh, three-dimensional supersymmetric QED defined on round three sphere. And L is the size of the sphere. And I introduced the Lagrangian, which is invariant under the supersymmetry, and which consists of four terms. Okay? One, two, one, two, three, four. So the kinetic term for the vector multiple fields, and the kinetic term for the bottom multiple fields, and then there are two additional terms. So the third one is called the chan Simon's term, and the fourth one is called the higher theory of all star. And today, uh, we are going to compute the partition function for this theorem. Okay, and the partition function, naively, is going to be a function of electromagnetic coupling, and uh, a T, and chan Simon's coupling, and Pagetiriopoulos company. Okay. And uh, previously, uh, in the last section, uh, in the last lecture, I said for free theory, for which the action integral is quadratic, the path integration is rather easy, it's a Gaussian integral. But now, you, as you can see, the Lagrangian contains cubic term here, for example. And also, this is the covariant derivative, so that it contains gauge field, so that this term contains quartic term. So the path integral for this Lagrangian is going to be very complicated, naively, but nevertheless, if I, if I use the supersymmetry, then miraculously, I can work out the path integral rather explicitly and uh, uh, I can write down the, pa uh, the partition function in a closed form. So mm, this is what I'm going to talk about. Okay. And the key idea is the local equation of this. Consider a path integral over some supersymmetric theory. Okay, consider Susie path integral. And in a uh, supersymmetric, supersymmetric path integral, okay, let, uh, let's suppose we are interested in computing the expectation value of the operator O and uh, using the path integral formally, it's an uh, integral over spheres, and we, we have a path integral rate. And if, if we are interested in computing the expectation by the four, we insert four here. So this is the rule, okay? And then, uh, if we are interested in a supersymmetric model, uh, this uh, system of integration complete, uh, has some uh, symmetry, delta. Delta is a supersymmetry, so delta is a symmetry invariance of the action integral, and also delta is also an uh, invariance of the path integration method. So this is our assumption. Such a uh, problem, we more, uh, very often consider the expectation value of O, which is a, a invariant under this. Most of the time, we focus on the problems of computing the expectation value of O, which are uh, invariant under the data. Okay. And sometimes this kind of O can be written as a delta or something. O is the delta exact if O is delta. 
resolve something else. Okay, so this is the definition of uh, the delta examples. Okay, and then if you admit this assumption, then what I can uh, tell is that the expectation value of delta exact quantity is vanished. Why is that? Okay. If I employ the path integration formalism, the expectation value of delta exact quantity is this. Okay. And if you recall that this is invariant, then this, this part can be written like this. Okay. And then if you use the invariance of the measure, this is zero. Okay? So this shows, this argument shows that the expectation value of delta exact quantity is always zero. Okay? So now, let's generalize this uh, formula so that now we have an additional coupling let's define the expectation value of operator O in a theory deformed by a part of like this. This is defined as a half integral with a modified action function. But the modification of the action is by this delta exact Then you can argue, let's consider this, this one. so if you consider this, so apparently it seems to depend on t in a non-trivial manner, but actually this value is t independent. Why is this? Let's try differentiating this uh, quantity with respect to t. Let's consider this. Then, okay. the differentiation with respect to t brings down something very like that here. Okay, and now. O is a uh, delta invariant, and this whole thing is also delta uh, invariant. So that if I apply the same argument as I have been here, this is zero. Uh, okay? So this leads to the conclusion that although this looks like a t-independent uh, dependent quantity, it is actually independent. Now you can recall what I have told you uh, in the last lecture that there is an approximation scheme called subtle point approximation that can, uh, that can be applied to a uh, general interacting quantum field theory. And now you can regard this piece as h bar over s. choose this delta V in an appropriate manner, then I'm allowed to apply the subtle point approximation scheme, which says that when T goes to infinity, H bar goes to zero. Then the approximation scheme becomes increasingly reliable, and then uh, the path integral localizes to the local minima of this delta. This quantity is independent of t, so I can choose the value of t uh, as I like. Then if I send t to be very large, then actually the uh, Gaussian approximation becomes exact. Then I can replace delta v 
fire quadratic approximation of itself, and I can explicitly do the path uh, integration on the Gaussian And it's given the exact one. And now let me go back to this Lagrangian. Okay. Uh, this Lagrangian consists of four terms. So four terms are all delta invariant. But some of them, some of the four terms are actually delta exact. So now let me tell you the fact. So this first one is exact. And the second one is also delta exact. But this third one and fourth one are actually not exact. implication of this? Well, there are some bad news coming from this. So although we wanted to uh, evaluate the partition function, and we expected it to be a function of various couplings, for example, electromagnetic coupling, and T coupling here, and transactive coupling, and the coupling. Actually, since these two Lagrangians are exact, means that the partition function is insensitive to the value of this e squared. Okay? Because this e squared has the same meaning as this p here. Okay? And very, very unfortunately, the value of the partition function is independent of this problem. That's a bad, yeah, rather sad news. Also, the partition function is independent of this p power. But still, the partition function is dependent on this coupling and this coupling. Okay? So this is a kind of sad news. But at the same time, we have a good news. So in order to compute the partition function, I can choose the value of this coupling to whatever value I like. And similarly, I can choose the value of P. I can set the value of P to whatever value I like. And as I said, and in the explanation of a, a saddle point approximation, the path integration becomes very, very simple in the limit of very small e square and very large p. The reason is that in that limit, I can replace this very, very complicated looking expression by just the quadratic approximation. Why this quantity is independent of p? So I try differentiating uh, this expression with respect to t. Okay. Then uh, if it is non-zero, then this quantity has no trivial dependence. But if it's, it's zero, this quantity is independent of p. Right? And then I just evaluate this t derivative. So if I if you differentiate this expression. The respectivity, you get this here. All here is delta infinite. Yeah, that's the reason. That's the reason. That's the reason. the subtle point approximation scheme to this integration problem. Okay, so where are the subtle points? Well, the subtle points are by definition the local minima of this Lagrangian and this Lagrangian, right? Okay. So where are the local minima? So let's first look at this 
Lagrange and for the elect uh, uh, vector marriage variable. And uh, uh, in the study of the local minima, you can actually forget about the all the terms contain intelligence. You just look at the terms which contain only bosons. There are three terms here and there. And they are all written as a sum of uh, complete squares. So, the several points are uh, characterized by this set of equations. Okay, so this is the condition for the subject. This actually tells me that all the southern points are up to gauge equivalence. These are other uh, equations characterizing the sum, characterizing the sum. Okay, so in the, uh, uh, the example of uh, the uh, subject point approximation I gave you uh, in the last lecture, uh, the subject point approximation, the, the formula for the approximation in is the sum over the But now we have a collection of subtle points parameterized by the constant value of sigma. So if I apply the subtle point approximation to this problem, then what I will get is an integral over the subtle point parameter. Okay. So this says that infinite dimensional path integral just reduces to just one dimensional integration over the subtle point. So this is a three-dimensional simplification. Yeah, in the same way, we can uh, work out the condition for the subtle point for the matter management field. So for the matter management field, all we have to do is to uh, look at this term, this term. Then yeah, what you will get is it's not so long, it's not so trivial, but for other management, uh, the condition is phi equals zero and f equals zero. So it's really the case that the infinite dimensional part of the world reduces to just one dimensional ordinary integral. Then uh, the next next thing we have to do in order to apply the subtle point approximation is that uh, if you recall uh, the formula I have given to you in the previous lecture, this the classical value of the path integral rate at the subtle point is local minimum x naught. Let's evaluate the classical value of these Lagrangian at the subtle points parameterized by A. Okay. So all, all we have to do is to just insert these conditions into these Lagrangians. Okay. Then the result is that.
exactly in the same way, the higher the Euphorus Lagrangian takes a non zero. So these are the non zero value of the uh, Lagrangian, not the subgroup. So if you want to have the uh, value of the classical action instead of Lagrangian at the subgroup point, for the value of the action uh, multiplied, all you have to do is multiply this result by the volume of the ground uh, sphere, of radius sphere. Which is 2 pi squared times n squared. Okay. So, just a question. So if I consider turn Simon Yang Mio, if I consider turn Simon Yang Mio, oh, so if I consider non-abelian turn Simon Yang Mio, then this one wouldn't work, right? Because the coupling constant will be mixed. It would also appear in the turn Simon term. So if I consider non-abelian. Oh, what, what, what if what if what if I consider the non-abelian yeah. 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 Ah. Then the coupling constant would appear, the, the Yang Mio's coupling constant would also appear in the turn Simon term as well. Oh, uh, if we are in a convention that all the Yamil's coupling uh, stays in front of everything yeah. like this, then uh, there is no risk. Even in a non-abelian case? Even in a non-abelian yeah, case. Yeah, thank you. OK. So now I can write down the formula for the sphere partition function for this uh, supercurity. But QED is a bit. Yeah. Yeah. So, but uh, you can uh, uh, generalize what I'm going to talk about today to a non abelian case. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, partition function is an integral over the subject point parameter A. And we also have this factor, which is in our case. Uh, This is the contribution from the Chan-Simons term. And also we have a contribution from the Fayette term. Yeah. Okay. So this is the value of x at the subtle points. And in addition, as I have explained to you uh, last time, there is a determinant. So this computation of this determinant is going to be very Delta is a uh, ratio of determinant. Okay, let me write down the uh, expression. So why do I get the, the determinant? Because the uh, subtle point approximation says uh, that uh, I can approximate this complicated Lagrangian by its quadratic approximation. Okay. So that the enumerator has the Dirac uh, determinant. So this is the Dirac determinant for, for the psi and its conjugate. And it's divided by the determinant of the Laplace operator.
This comes from the Psi and Phi, and F has trivial determinants, so let's forget about it. And we also have to give the determinant for the gauge field and the uh, scalar field and this gauge of the determinant for lambda and in the denominator I have a determinant for the wave operator acting on the vector field and since the vector field is a real field I have to put one over two and this is the wave operator for A. Uh, I think I can explain why what do we need to do write by this expression theta. This is the wave operator for vector field and also we have the wave operator for sigma field. And also since the sigma field is real, we have to put one of the here. And the most important is since we are talking about the gauge invariant system, we have to divide the whole expression by the whole the gauge. This factor is also Maybe you may not understand what I mean by this, but uh, later on, maybe I will have some time to explain what this is. Uh, questions? So, sorry? Ghost. Uh, ghost is too difficult for this lecture, so I would rather not introduce ghost. Okay, but, uh, there is a confusion, but uh, we can uh, we have another way to compute our uh, well, uh, we can uh, we have another way to argue how to model by the volume of the gauge field. Yeah, I will show you if I have a time I will show you. Okay. So we almost arrived at the final answer. So our remaining task is to compute these determinants. And then here down. So, okay, I will just number various determinants for later purpose. Maybe this is going to be the order of my computation of the determinant. But what, what I'm going to do in the next few minutes is to compute the determinant for data operator on ground sphere. So, before doing the computation of the determinant, we have to familiarize ourselves to the geometry of the bounds. Let's, let's do this exercise first. Other? Mm. As I said, for vector multiple field, it's a complete square, so uh, let's not, not worry about it. For matter management, it's a little bit difficult, but uh, as you notice, this matter arrangement is quasi. 